somebody finally got a gaming microphone right. Rock Audio's Loki mic goes way beyond what you might find in a basic low-end RGB mic, and they've added some really thoughtful pro-level touches. And it has one very important feature you'd want on a mic if you're not a gamer. And I'll get to that in a moment. The Loki system is really beefy, and I know weight doesn't mean quality necessarily, but when I pulled this out of the box, I was like, Whoa. Whoa, this mic is definitely not going to slide around on your desk accidentally. And it's not just the stand, the mic itself is built like a tank. On the bottom of the mic, you have a USB-C port and a mini headphone jack, that's pretty standard. There's also a 5 8 inch mount point, so you can attach this to a mic stand or a boom arm. Now the mic doesn't come with a mic clip, so if you do mount it to a mic pole, you won't be able to adjust the angle, it'll just be right there. If you attach it to a boom arm though, this shouldn't be a problem. I'm gonna put it on a boom arm in a little bit, it. That way you can see how the mic works on a boom arm and also hear how it sounds when it's a little bit closer to my face. Up inside the head basket here, there are three mic elements that are used to create four polar patterns. And the one you're going to use most often is probably the cardioid setting, which is what you're hearing me use right now. And you might know this already, but a cardioid mic picks up sound from the front of the mic, but rejects it from the sides and the back. You also get a bi-directional or figure eight polar pattern and that records audio from the front of the mic and the back of the mic. And this can be useful if you're recording with two people, you're doing an interview, you can put the mic right in front and pick up audio on both sides, but it will reject it from the, the other sides, the 90 degree angle sides. However, you do also pick up a lot more room sound, but here, let me, uh, let me demonstrate here. So this is the front of the mic. And if I turn it to the side here, it's cutting down quite a bit on the volume level. And then I go to the back of the microphone again, and then I go around to the other side. You also have a stereo mode, so you can record in stereo. And uh, here, let's test that here. Test, 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 la, 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 la. So if you have some headphones on, you can hear me going back and forth, left and right. Ooh, it's stereo. And the last polar pattern we have is an omni mode, which just means it's recording sound about equally from all directions. The frequency response, the volume should be roughly the same from everywhere. So if you're trying to pick up the entire room or you have multiple people around the microphone, omni is the way to go. But again, you're picking up a lot of room sound, so you wouldn't want to use Omni unless that was something you really, really wanted to use. So here's Omni mode, and uh, if I just rotate the mic around, rotating the mic around, it's uh, roughly the same volume and uh, frequency response. And of course, a lot of handling noise because I'm uh, moving my hands on the stand as well. Now you select these microphone pickup patterns by pushing this upper knob, and the mic toggles through the different patterns, and the indicator will change to show what pattern you've got selected. This upper knob is also responsible for setting your mic's volume or output gain. One nice touch is that the knob stops rotating at the minimum and the maximum. On some USB mics I've tested, one knob gets used for a lot of different functions, probably to save money, and so the knob just spins and never stops. And this makes it hard to figure out by feel where your settings are. Now, I think it's important to have the knob physically stop when you can't change the gain any further. Having that tactile feedback might save you some headaches in a live situation. The bottom knob controls the headphone volume level, and when you push this knob, however, it cycles through the LED ring colors. You get, I think, five different colors, plus a slowly changing RGB mode. Now, this is a pretty cool feature. The LED that shows the polar pattern will always match the color of your ring light. So your mic will always be color coordinated. On the top of the mic, you'll notice a symbol with a microphone with a line through it. Now, call me an idiot, but at first I thought this was a reminder not to talk into the top of the microphone. This is a side address microphone, so it sort of made sense. But no, durr, the top of the mic is actually a giant button to mute the mic, and the mic ring turns red when you're in mute mode, which, by the way, is the only time you get the red LED. And this button is a very sensitive soft touch, too. All you gotta do is, all you gotta do is touch it lightly and mute the microphone. See how it turned red? See how it turned red there? The Loki sounds very good. Now, it's a modern boosted kind of sound, but it's definitely the sound you want when podcasting or streaming. And you also get some insane sample rates. This mic will do up to 24-bit, 192 kilowobbles. Personally, I stick with 24-bit, 48K, 
but you do have the option if you need it. Now, I do have a couple of minor complaints about the mic, and then I will tell you about that non-gamer feature that I really appreciate. First, I wish the LED ring did more, like responding to input volume or something like that, or I don't, I guess I'm kind of torn about that, actually. I don't particularly want a super flashy microphone that's gonna distract my viewers. Now, you might have different needs, so, Having the option for a more active LED would be nice, even if I personally wouldn't use it. Here's a more functional issue. You can't mute the mic input in the headphones. You always get the mic signal, which is zero latency, by the way, mixed with whatever's coming from your computer. Yes, I know, you can mute the mic, but that's not the same thing. There could be times that you only want to hear what's coming from your device while still recording the mic. Is this crucial? Mm, probably not. I put the Loki on a boom arm now so that you can see, well, how it works on a boom arm and also how it sounds when it's a little closer to my face. Now, you do get some proximity effect, especially with the cardioid polar pattern. That's kind of built into cardioid polar patterns. And we should probably do a plosive test, too. So I'm going to do it uh, kind of off to the side of the mic at the camera. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Okay, brace yourself. I haven't done this yet. I haven't tested it. Let me see how this sounds right directly onto the microphone. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. I don't know. That didn't sound too bad, actually, considering there was no pop filter on top. The mic goes for about $175, which is definitely on the premium side of things. However, everything about the mic is both well-built and well-thought-out. Yes, you can get a cheap RGB mic for $20, but it's going to be complete garbage, and it's also going to look like a hideous eyesore. This mic is a gamer mic for grown-ups. When I first saw this mic at a trade show, I was impressed with the sound and the features, but my next thought was, oh god, I'm going to want to turn that LED light off from time to time. Guess what? You can turn it off. Just press and hold the bottom knob. But Rock Audio gave this function some extra thought too. If you select a new polar pattern while the LED is turned off, the LED will turn on briefly to show you what pattern you've selected. Now, I know that doesn't seem like a big deal, but if they hadn't done it, the mic would be tough to use. Here, let me show you. Also, if you mute the mic, the mute light stays on and overrides the fact that you turned off the LED. That makes a whole lot of sense. Now, Rock Audio is a small company and woman-owned, and I actually got to chat with the owner when I tried out this mic. Since the company is small, you can't buy this on the Big A online shopping site. However, I put a link to an online source for the Loki in the video notes. This isn't an affiliate link for me. I just want to make sure you can find this mic. I think it's definitely worth checking out. Now, if you are new to podcasting or streaming or creating videos, then you might be making the number one biggest mistake that new creators make, which is recording bad audio. Fortunately, I have made a video just for you that's going to get you up to speed right away and you can check it out right here.